If you want to know what towns to avoid in Southern California, Number five, Montebello, California. What makes this town a bad place to live is the city next to it, for one. The city of commerce shares a border with Montebello. Number five, Montebello, California. Montebello is just southeast of downtown Los Angeles, and it has a few minor problems, making it a little less appealing to most people. The income per capita in Montebello is about 29% lower than the national average. They don't have terrible poverty, but it's there. Crime is up there, but it's not terrible. What makes this town a bad place to live is the city next to it, for one. The city of commerce shares a border with Montebello. It's about 80% warehouses and factories. If you've ever lived near an industrial area like this, you know it brings a host of problems, especially the number of people living in their cars and motorhomes at night. You know, the Geico is their landlord types. Now, what really puts the nail in Montebello's coffin is the cost of housing. For some reason, with all the problems and everything else, the real estate is sky high in Montebello. A housing expert told the New York Times in a 2019 article that prospects for first-time buyers weren't good and that opportunities to live in Montebello weren't growing and probably won't for years. Their property value is far too high for what you're getting there. Montebello has about 62,000 residents, 60% of them are working, and 14% live in poverty. The average commute time is about 33 minutes. And this is a weird little fact about the place. About 25% of the population of Montebello doesn't have health insurance. Number four, Long Beach, California. The city of Long Beach was officially incorporated in 1897, so the town's been there a while. Long Beach grew as a seaside resort with a little farming. The Pike was a beachside amusement park in Long Beach from 1902 until 1979. It had food, games, rides, it had a sky wheel, dual Ferris wheel thing, a roller coaster. It was apparently kind of nice. Those were the good times for Long Beach. My grandmother used to talk about how growing up, Long Beach was where you aspired to live. That's where if you had money, you went and moved to Long Beach. Sometime around the 1970s, the place nosedived. The overall crime rate in Long Beach currently is 31% higher than the national average. The cost of housing in Long Beach is 116% higher than the national average. It costs far too much to live in Long Beach for what you're getting these days. A little side note to this one, that amusement park, the Pike, now they'd closed it down in 1979. And it was somewhere around the mid 80s that they started actually tearing the place down. They had a, like a fun house or a haunted house type thing. And when they were taking it down, they had these mannequins that, you know, were there to scare you or whatever. Well, one of them kind of broke. They found a body inside that had been there since the 1800s. I'm not even kidding. There was a body in there all those years. He'd probably been put in that. It was, I guess, cased in wax or something like that. But this person was put in there in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they found him in the 80s. That's just crazy. Far from Huntington Park is Bell Gardens. Don't let the word gardens fool you. It has none. It's almost false advertising at this point. This is the type of city that 99% of the homes have metal security doors on them and about 60% have bars on the window, which is strange. We'll talk about that in a minute. Bell Gardens has about 42,000 residents. 63% of them are working and almost 30% are living in poverty. According to one city official in 2000, the city has had to depend on a casino for much of its tax revenue. In 2002, it provided more than half the city's revenue. In 2010, it was still around there. It was about 45%. Remarkably, the crime is isn't terrible in Bell Gardens like other cities surrounding it, but still the poverty level is about 90% higher than the national average. Number two, Hemet, California. Now this list is in no particular order. I say that because a lot of these towns on this list are equal in the amount of suckage they possess. The last two on this list are statistically the same except for population. So we'll start with Hemet. Hemet was the place to move to back in 1995. Around 1999, people started changing their mind about Hemet. About 2010, the people who had moved there realized they'd made a horrible mistake. Sort of like taking my cousin sex to a buffet. <laughs> Hemet has a population of about 85,000 people. It's struggled since the 2008 recession with foreclosures and getting people back to work. 25% of the people live in poverty and crime rates are high. In 2016, 623 cars were stolen in Hemet. 173 robberies were reported and police logged 398 aggravated assaults. The most this century. Hemet is definitely a place you don't want to move to.
Hey, holy shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you kidding me? Hey, Jim. Are you fucking kidding me, Josh? Jim. You're kidding Jim, me, Josh. You're about to kill me. I almost died. You almost killed me. Are you insane? Oh, oh my heart. Baby. No, don't freaking touch me. I was frozen. Get off of me, seriously. How long have you been planning this? For a long time. Did you throw a rag at me? I threw everything at you. Oh I forgot God. about knives. I would have taken all the knives if I would have removed them. Mm -hmm. Happy Halloween, baby. Happy Halloween. Yo, yo, I'm not tripping. This freaking thing, I'm not tripping. I swear to God, I'm not tripping. This. I swear to God, I'm not. I need my hand. Oh my God. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh! Yeah, why are you? 